Hi everyone and uh, welcome to tonight's video where we're going to be talking about two very important postulates that we're going to be using uh, throughout the rest of the chapter in terms of proving that two triangles are congruent and they are called the side 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 and the side angle side postulates. So uh, we don't always need to know that all six parts of two triangles are congruent in order to prove that they are congruent. So that's what we've been doing so far. We said, well, the only way you know that two triangles are congruent is if all of their parts are also congruent. So we were saying that every corresponding angle and side needed to be congruent in order to show that the two triangles were. But we have four different postulates that we're going to be using um, that's going to help us prove two triangles are congruent without having to show all six parts are. They're only going to need three, but it's very uh, specific as to which three those are. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the first two, and then uh, we'll get into the second two later. So let's take a look at the first postulate. It's called the side-side-side postulate, and you'll see it abbreviated as SSS, and you'll be able to use that whenever uh, you're using it in a proof instead of having to write out side-side-side. Okay, it says that if all three sides of a triangle are congruent to all three corresponding sides of the other triangle, then the two are congruent. So we have a picture of what that looks like here. I have triangle ABC, and then I have triangle DEF. And what we notice here is that the three corresponding sides, so AB and DE are congruent, BC and EF are congruent, and AC and DF are also congruent. So these three different corresponding sides in both triangles are congruent, so that means that they are congruent. And remember, it's really important to use proper notation here. So if I write this as triangle ABC is congruent to, I gotta make sure that when I write the name of the second triangle, I'm using everything that's in the corresponding uh, spots as A, B, and C. So remember, A and B, matches up with D and E. So that means that D needs to go where A is, E needs to go where B is, and F then needs to go where C is. So that's how I would write these two triangles that are congruent. Okay, and so what we're seeing is just the three sides. Before we said we needed to be all three sides and all three angles. Right now we're saying if you just have the three sides, that's enough to give you uh, two congruent triangles. Okay. Now moving on to the next one, the side angle side postulate. It says that if two sides and their included angle in one triangle are congruent to the corresponding two sides and included angle in another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Uh, important side note here, when we say included angle, what we mean is the angle that's between the two sides. So angle between the two sides is another way to say included. So if you look at our two triangles here, I have triangle uh, PQR, and if I look at the two sides here, the included angle, so I have side QP and RP, and this angle P is the one that's included. So if I look at my congruence symbols here in the triangle, I have the hash mark there, the congruence sign, uh, the arc right there on the angle, and then the two hash marks there. So if I look over here, I named this triangle Q prime, P prime, and R prime, so that you could see where the points match up a little bit easier, even though it's kind of like on its side. Again, I have the congruence marks such that the angle is in between these two congruent sides. So if I want to write this out, um, I would say triangle PQR is congruent to, and now I just got to make sure everything's in the same place. Uh, it's going to be P prime, Q prime, and R prime. And it's okay to use the letters in whatever order as long as they're matching, right? They're all, all corresponding. Um, but in this case, uh, even though I didn't name it QPR, that's how I'm looking at this to determine that I have a side angle side, right? Because it's got to be the side, then the angle between, and then the other side that are congruent. And I'll show you an example of where this wouldn't work. But for now, side angle side um, 
always has to be the side, the angle between it and the other side to prove that these two triangles are congruent. Okay, so those are our two postulates. What are we going to use them for? Well, they're used to prove that two triangles are congruent. It should be triangles. Um, so most of the time what's going to happen here is we'll be given two pieces of information and then we'll have to use another fact that we already know to complete these requirements in order to use our postulates. And so today we have side, 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 and side, angle, side. And like I said, later on we're going to learn a couple more. But for now, those are the only two that we know and we're allowed to use. So if I look at this example here, I have given segment AB is congruent to segment EB. Segment CB is congruent to segment DB, and those are marked on our picture here. I want to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EBD. So I know that all I, can, all I need to prove is that either three sides are congruent, or a side, its included angle, and another side are congruent in order to prove the triangles are congruent. So, so far, I have two sides, and so now I need to either be able to show that the third side is congruent to use side, 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 or the included angle in between these two sides are congruent in order to use side, angle, side. So we're going to do a two column proof. And just like we've done before, our first statement is always the given statement. So I'm going to say AB is congruent to, a little sloppy there, sorry, congruent to EB and we can use a semicolon to also list that CB, segment CB is congruent to segment DB and our reason for that is given. Okay, so we've already got two of the three things we need. Now I want to be able to show that either the third side is congruent or the included angle is congruent. So looking at this diagram here, I don't really have any information that might tell me, be able to tell me or that I to prove that AC is congruent to CD. I just don't have anything here that would show me that. So I'm going to give up on that. And so it's not going to be side, side, side. So is there anything that I can do to show that these two angles here are congruent? And if I'm looking at this picture here, it's pretty clear that these are vertical angles. So they are, they share vertex, their sides are made up of opposite rays, makes like a nice X here and they're across from each other. So my second statement here is going to be that angle uh, ABC is congruent to angle EBD. And I chose to write that a very specific way. Um, the reason for this is vertical angles are congruent, and we can abbreviate. Um, Instead of writing out the word congruence, you can use a symbol. Instead of writing out angles, you can use a symbol with apostrophe S. Uh, so I said I wrote this a very specific way. It's ABC is congruent to angle EBD. right? I can't just use B to name the angle here because it's kind of like shared by both triangles. And I also used ABC and EBD in order because if I'm looking at the name of the triangles, right? A corresponds with E because those are the the, one, the sides that have just the one hash mark. Okay, so, and then C corresponds with D. So I put them in the right spot already. So if I have now a side, an angle, and a side, a side, an angle, and a side, they're all con they're congruent, side, angle, side. So I used vertical angles are congruent to show that that angle there is congruent. So now my final statement here is what I want to prove. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EBD, and the reason for that is going to be the side angle side postulate. You can abbreviate postulate as just post. Okay, so this is a kind of a simple one, right, where it just gave us two pieces of information, and then I needed to know something to prove uh, the third piece that was missing, either side angle side or side side side. Okay, so one last reminder before we leave is, remember, we can only use what we know so far. So when we're naming congruent triangles, it's important to note that when we, we can only prove these triangles so far using side, 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 and side, angle, side. So they have to be in that order. It's gotta be all three sides, 
or it's got to be side and included angle and another side. So if I have this picture here, this does not give me enough information. So we're going to see some examples where they give you pictures like this and they say, can you prove these two triangles are congruent? Here we'd have to say no, because what I have is I have two sides and an angle, but the problem is this angle isn't the included angle, right? So it's not between the two sides that I know are congruent. In fact, this would be side, side, angle, right? So I have a side, a side, and an angle here. Uh, you could also uh, abbreviate that as angle, side, side, but usually we say side, side, angle, and, and you know what I mean if you write that out. So there's two sides and an angle. It's not included, so I cannot use this. So in this picture, I would say not enough information to prove. Okay, so uh, make sure you have good notes. If you have any questions, remember, write them off on the margins and the sides so that we can start with uh, answering any review questions you have tomorrow in class, and we'll do some practice problems with these, maybe do a few proofs together, and I will see you then. Have a great night.